Welcome to Networked Programs. This is Chapter 12. Now we're going to learn a little bit about how we talk to resources on the network using Python. Now, this is a really quick introduction to how the network really works. I have a whole book that I wrote. Um, it's also translated into Spanish on how the network works, starting at the very lowest layer packets and everything right on up. And it's actually really easy to read. I wrote it for a high school audience. Um, it's a short book and pretty easy to read. So if you read that book, you will understand that there is this layered architecture, uh, the TCP architecture that sort of runs our network at the lowest layer that on one side here, this is your computer and this is a server computer. And if you sort of want a web page, it goes across the network, does this like 15 or 20 times, then it goes up into the server, reads the data, and then the data comes back, 15, 20 hops for the packets, and then it's shown to you as what you see. Um, and so that's how it works. And there's all these layers that we're not gonna talk about in this section, but I talk about in that book. Um, the layers of the link layer, which talk about how to get over one hop, the internet layer, which talks about how to construct, say 15 or so hops to get packets back and forth. That's the, the sort of lower level bits. We're gonna start at what we call the transport layer. And that's the layer where your computer sort of assumes that it can make a, a phone call to another computer, another process running on a, a program on this computer, talks to a program on this computer, and then it kind of comes back. Okay, and so we're gonna, we're gonna leave this alone. We're gonna ignore it. We're gonna assume that there's this nice reliable pipe that's going from point A to point B. And what are we gonna do with the pipe? But if you're interested, take a look at the book. So we're just gonna start with a pipe, of some kind of a connection. We have two processes, process, process, and we have some kind of a connection between them. And it is a connection that we can both use to talk and to listen. In nerd terms, we call these things sockets. And that is one process running on one computer, another process running on one computer, another second computer connected through the internet somehow, and one computer speaks into that socket and it comes out and the other computer returns something and it comes. And so this is a bi-directional protocol of data, which is a series of, in effect, data phone calls between applications. So the application might be on your side, this might be your browser, Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer. On the other side, this is a web server, might be Internet IIS, Internet something something from Microsoft, or Apache, or Java Tomcat. There's another program and you are making phone calls between these programs. Now in general, um, these servers here stay up all the time and you sort of just can make a request when you feel like it on your, in your program. But that's what we're going to do. And this is what we call a socket. So that little connection, that phone call, that data phone call is what we call a socket. Now, you have to decide which of the systems you're going to talk to and then which of the services on those systems or which process. And so we have this concept called port numbers and they're best thought of like extensions on phones. So uh, one organization has one phone number and it says, please enter the extension of the party you'd like to talk to. Well, that's kind of what ports are. They're like, here is, I'm a, I'm a server and I'm connected to the internet. Please enter the extension of the process that you would like to talk to. And so, for example, there might be processes running on various computers, and so the email is known to hang out on port 25 or extension 25. Login, insecure login lives on port 23. Insecure web lives on 80, and secure web lives on 443. And there's a couple of different protocols. Say if you have your mail stored on Gmail, and you have a local uh, mail client, say like Thunderbird or Apple Mail, that talks a protocol, to pull that mail across, and those live on various ports. So these ports are those extensions, and by convention, we have standards that tell us what to roughly expect at those ports. So when you're talking to port 80, you expect to talk to a web server or an HTTP uh, server. If you're talking on port 23, you expect to talk to a Telnet server, and on and on and on and on. And so these are the extensions, the typical commonly used default extensions for various network application processes that are serving us data. Now sometimes you'll go to a URL and you'll see in that URL there's a colon and a number that means it's a web server that's running on a port other than the official 80 or 443 port. 
Now, in Python, we can talk to these sockets, right? We can just talk to them, and it's really easy, surprisingly easy. Um, we have to import socket, because that's a library. It comes with Python, but until you can use it, you can't use it in your uh, program until you say it. And then you, basically in the socket library, you call it socket function. That's what that syntax is saying. Um, you're making a socket. Now the key to a socket, it's, it's like, sort of like a, an unopened file handle. It's half of a file handle. It's an, it's an outward looking thing that's not yet connected. These parameters, you're just going to type them in. This says we're going to make a socket that goes across the internet, and it's, it's a stream socket, which means that it's a series of characters that come one after another, rather than a series of blocks of text. There's another kind that's harder to deal with, but we're going to do this. So this, don't worry about this line. Just know that this creates a socket, but not does not associate it. The very next line, we get back a socket a socket object in this variable that I'm storing in the variable my sock. And then when you want to make a connection across the internet to the far end, you say, oh, hey, dear socket, extend yourself across the internet. Make the phone call to this host, data.pr4e.org, and on that port 80. So that's making the phone call. This is like the phone number, and this is like the phone extension. So that's we haven't sent any data yet. We have simply rung the phone of a process, hopefully living on port 80. If it's there, great. This might blow up. This one here won't blow up, but this line here could blow up. If there's nothing sitting on that process, it would come back and say, oh, you tried to call, you got no answer. That's a legitimate thing to happen. Maybe you don't have a network connection, or maybe that service is down on that server, or the whole server is down. But, um, so I just, it's kind of amazing that we're sitting here in Python, and in three lines we have uh, probably a half a million engineers have built this thing called the internet, all these protocols and all this software, and we just made use of it in three lines of Python. And I guess this is one of the reasons that people absolutely love Python, absolutely love Python. So now that we have a socket, we have to ask ourselves, what kind of data are we going to send, and then what kind of data are we going to expect to receive across that socket?